Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I wanted to do a quick video, answer a few questions that people have been sending to me about the, the spindle in this PM728VT. So, previous video, we threw an indicator on it, and the TIR, you know, as is, is far as I can check in my garage, is pretty good. I am quite impressed with how good the, the spindle and the bearings are in this machine. Uh, well, now I've gone through the break-in procedure. I just followed the same instructions that I uh, used for my PM7 uh, or PM25MV. Used the same instructions uh, for this spindle, and it's broken in. So I want to give you a, a listen to what it sounds like. But the first thing I want—I want to put a, a little bit of information out there first. You got to remember that this is a. Uh, you know, this is a manual milling machine. This wasn't built from the factory to be a CNC milling machine. So it was built with, you know, a quill, right? That was one of the features that was added. You know, you have the quill, kind of like a drill press, right? Uh, a proper CNC machine generally won't have a quill like this. Uh, some do, if it's like a, a tool room type of mill, but usually a, a, a standard production type of CNC milling machine will not have a quill such as this. But this was originally designed to be a manual milling machine, so it has the quill functionality. And something you got to realize, because it has a quill, the spindle, uh, it, it, it's built, right? There's what you have up here, up top. I know most of you guys understand this stuff, but what you have up here is you have this, this carrier, right? This this carrier that has the pulleys on it, uh, that has uh, uh, splined features inside of it that the spindle actually slides through. So there's, there's moving parts here that wouldn't necessarily exist on an actual purpose-built CNC machine. So you, you need to know that. And wh whenever you have moving parts, you always have to have some, some clearance, right? Uh, and so that's what you have here. If you if you look at the spindle, and I'll, I'll be really quiet so you can hear this. Hopefully you can hear that. That little bit of what I'll say is a rattling noise. That's the clearance between the uh, the splines on the the spindle and the splines on the, the pulley that drives it. Right. So you got to have clearance. If, if you don't have any clearance, you can't do this very well, right? If there was zero clearance, this thing would not slide and, and move. So all, all of these milling machines are like that. The PM725 is like that too. Now what I generally do when I convert them over to CNC is I, I make a plastic bushing that I press in there and uh, it basically it disables the functionality of the, of the you know, the, the quill, the drill press type of functionality. I, I generally I generally get rid of that when I do the CNC conversion. You don't have to, but that's what I do. But you just, I'm, I'm putting this out there because uh, this, this right here, you're going to hear that when I turn this thing on. You, you don't hear that on my other mill because I made a plastic bushing uh, eliminating that functionality, right? My quill doesn't work on that mill anymore. This quill is still fully functional. So let's, uh, let's fire it up. So I, I'm on the high speed set of pulleys right now. That is 833 RPM. Sixteen hundred RPM. So it's pretty quiet. I can hear that little bit of uh, that resonance there, the clearance between the spindle and the drive pulley, but but all in all, fairly quiet. Twenty five hundred, almost twenty six hundred. Pretty quiet. The 
you have a good listen. Let's crank it up a little bit. So now we're starting to get a little faster. This is over 3,000 RPM. So here we go. That's it. That's wide open. That is max max speed. That's pretty quiet. And the vibration, I put my hand on it. I don't feel much. It's well balanced. So let's just do something here. I'm going to put it back to 22. I'm going to unlock the quill. I'm going to move the quill. It's still pretty quiet. So I'm, I'm going to leave the quill all the way down, fully deployed. I'm going to play with the RPM now. So here we go, we're fully deployed. We're fully extended, I don't know, fully deployed. I don't know where that came from. We're fully extended. Yeah, it's over 3,000. Pretty good. Here we go. Max RPM. Fully extended quill. Sounds pretty good. The vibrations, they are reasonable. So this thing is well balanced. So let's turn it back down and let's talk about this for a second. So chances are, I'll be willing to bet that if you have a machine like this, you have probably run into a situation where when you fully extend your quill, you might hear some noise and you may get some vibrations. And I want to tell you what I did to, to prevent that. Because in, in all honesty, uh, when I first did this experiment, I did get some weird noise and vibrations when I, not when the quill was retracted. When the quill was retracted, it was just fine. But when I completely extended it, uh, I got some vibration and some noises. And here's the deal on that. So this has a, a quill, just like a drill press, right? Goes up and down and there's times when that functionality is, is super handy. So if I come over here to my little cheap, dinky Harbor Freight drill press, this has the same functionality. And the way that it accomplishes it, it uses this clock spring type of mechanism on the side uh, to, to raise and lower the quill. The uh, Precision Matthews bench mill, it doesn't use that mechanism. And uh, one of the reasons is, I think, because you have this feature where you can, you can lock the quill and use this fine feed, right? So you can, I'm gonna mess myself up here because I'm only doing this one handed, but you, you have the fine feed, right, on the quill. So I, I believe in order to get that functionality, you cannot have the clock spring uh, return mechanism. At least you can't, can't get it easily. So what they do is they put a spring Actually, there's the spring right there. Uh, there's the thing that captivates the spring. They put this spring in the, in the spindle. So like up, up in here, this, there'll be a spring. And what happens is when the quill is fully retracted, everything's okay. But when you, when you fully extend the quill and you compress the spring, uh, all this stuff kind of gets cocked to one side, I think, and it, it's you know, throws things out of balance. So I took it out. I got rid of it. I pulled the spring out. I pulled this thing out. Um, and now I don't have to worry about that. There's less mass in there. I don't have anything going out of balance. But thing is, without this stuff in there, the spindle will just, it'll just fall right out. Literally, the spindle will just drop right out of the headstock here. So what I did was, is I 3D printed this little plastic thing here, 
And basically what it does is it fits down over the splines of the, the spindle. And it's about the same height as all this stuff is stacked up. So what that does is it makes, makes it so my, my spindle's never going to, it can't fall out of my headstock. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you, um, I, I actually dropped it out of the headstock here while I was playing with it. Now it didn't fall far, it only fell like an inch when I was messing with it, but um, yeah, it was, I was felt kind of stupid. So what I'll do, for those of you that are interested in doing this, I'll put a link to this this little plastic spacer in the description of this video just in, in case you're interested in something like this. But if you want to run high RPM, if you want to use all 4,000 RPM and you want to use the quill, uh, I, I think you may want to consider doing something like this. If, if you're not uh, going to use the quill very often, uh, you don't plan on running little teeny tiny drill bits or whatever, then it'll be fine just the way it is. Leave it as is. But for me, I decided to take that thing out of there. Now, there is also potential here if you're, if you're crafty. Um, you could build yourself a spring return. You could, you could just put an outrigger on here with, you know, some kind of uh, spring that pulls this thing up and down if, if, you really, if you really like that. But I'll be honest with you, I, I don't have a problem, you know, doing this manually, right? I don't, I don't feel like that's a big deal not having the spring return on the quill. In fact, I don't know, if you're doing really fine work, Maybe there's even some benefit to not having a, a spring return. I walked around uh, my day job and I just kind of manually surveyed all of our manual milling machines and uh, most of the ones I laid my hand on did not have a spring return. That doesn't mean that they didn't have that at some point in their life, but uh, they don't have them now. So whatever that is, it is. So there you go. There is the... Precision Matthews PM728 VT running really high RPM, over 4,000 RPM. I love it. Sounds great. It's nice and smooth. Uh, this is awesome. So this is this is one of those things where every time I uh, I do a, a milling machine CNC conversion, I always wish there was more RPM. Uh, I always wind up changing the bearings and the spindles and all that stuff. You know, this machine, you don't have to do that. It comes from the factory with the angular contact bearings, with the high RPM uh, motor and drive. Uh, that's cool. So that's something you don't have to take on on your own. Uh, this machine, it just comes right out of the box with that. So, all right, this video is about three minutes longer than I wanted it to be. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.